it is suitable for general family viewing. Hi and welcome to another episode of The Grind. Well today I'm at a very unique place, a very unique business. I know it's unique because I've not been here before and just by walking in I've seen the uniqueness of the place. And today I'm joined by one of the proprietor of one of the most, wait for it, delicious desserts that you can ever go for. And I'm going to let her introduce herself so that I do not give her the wrong titles and then you can continue from there. Karibu sana. Thank you. Uh, please introduce yourself and tell us what you do. Alright, my name is Sisenda Mangeli. I'm one of the directors for Magical Products. Magical Products is a mother company for YOLO ice cream and married to uh, Yeah. YOLO ice cream. Today we're talking about the YOLO ice cream. What was the idea behind YOLO ice cream? Well, initially we, 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 we started out of, we got it from someone else. Uh, we were at Kenya Cinema for the past five years. And we, when we started the business, we, the person that we took it from was selling it out. So it was not our major interest until when we got to eat and then that's when we realized, okay, maybe we could give it a try. Yeah. So we decided, okay, fine. We didn't know anything about it. We just gained interest and voila. We yeah. started an ice cream business without any knowledge behind it. Yeah, I didn't have any knowledge. Wow. How was it in the first? Uh, it was very months? difficult, very, very difficult considering the person we left who gave us the business or he left us to. We bought the business from, he didn't walk us through from suppliers, we didn't know nothing. We didn't know how to uh, make shakes, how to make ice creams. He left, he left when we were just like, okay, zero, literally. So we had to gain interest together with my husband, he's called Mark. Uh, all of a sudden, YouTube is in interest, a group of schools, and here we are. YouTube group of schools has helped to grow the business. <laughs> so when you were buying the business from the proprietor before, is it that you came together with funding, savings, loans, or how do you go? When we bought it then, uh, yeah, we had the funds, we had ready funds, but it was a rundown business. A, our following, if you've been following us for a long time from Kenya Cinema, there are some clients who have seen us from scratch. Oh, they've started with you, yeah. So they will tell you it was just plain ice cream, plain chips, nothing much. So it, it was quite run down one machine. So we just bought it, we had ready money for it. But after some time, we saw the need of doing renovations. So we stayed for six months and then we decided to buy the whole place. Initially, we just had a small area. We used to buy, uh, pay rent for like 10 years. Then we bought the whole floor, as in the whole um, unit, yeah, for Kenya Cinema. Then that's when we seek financial aid from Sarkoz, yeah. And it has helped you grow now? Oh yes, up to now we highly recommend Sarkoz, <laughs> yes. Yes, highly recommend. <laughs> yeah, so when it comes to making the products that you have, how many have you been able to like commit to now you can say that YOLO has this amount of brands that you sell when it comes to ice cream and shakes? Well, I have seen it grow. Honestly, I do. Uh, the demand, you get to listen to what the clients are saying, and then there's a lot of experimenting. Like, we get to just sit with my staff and cook stuff. Yes. And then we give it to each other. It's like, how is it? How is it? Yeah. So we started from a menu of uh, shakes, ice cream, five items. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have a menu of plus 20. Wow. Yeah, and it's still growing. Nice. Yeah, and all of them have a different taste because we get to incorporate different. So we, our goal is to whatever ice cream you come and eat today, tomorrow if you decide to do something else, it is totally a different experience. Oh, so you get if you get this taste today, tomorrow. Tomorrow, you, if you choose something else, it's not a different same. taste. Oh, that that's quite uh, unique. So for yellow ice cream, you have a place where people come and sit. Yes. It's not uh, many people actually think of the idea. You know, let's go have ice cream and sit down. What's pushed you towards that idea? Kenya Cinema. Back to Kenya Cinema. We've been there for five years. Mm -hmm. We had a small space. Very small. We could only accommodate 
maximum of 25 to 30 people. So with the growth of menu, after some time we used to do every year we introduce something in the menu, plus 10, plus 5. So we never knew that it's going to have demand like that. So the more we, we introduce new stuff, the, the demand grows. So guys used to complain. If you look at our social media accounts, Google, you get good reviews, oh, good ice cream, good yeah. ice cream, but it's too congested, but the space is too small, but it's ever full. So we saw the demand of going big, where someone can literally come with their family and have a good time, their girlfriends, yeah. a date. Yeah. So there was a constant demand of a big space. Mm -hmm. Then we decided to go big. We got this place just, uh, we've been a month old. Mm -hmm. We moved on um, April. Yeah, and so far so good. Yeah. So you actually revolutionized the idea of ice cream that yes. instead of walking it, come sit, yes. have fun. Now people literally come and sit. Yeah. You, I never knew guys can eat ice cream like that. <laughs> come and sit and eat ice cream. Consider we don't sell food, yeah. we just sell cold stuff. Yeah, they come and sit and have a good time, birthday, baby showers, everything. Wow, oh, you're open to all that. Oh. So I've seen uh, some of your ice cream products and they're the most unique products I've ever seen. What led you to that idea that I can come and get some weird mixtures, yeah. but still the taste is good? What led you to that? Uh, it's just creativity, I guess, and, and interest. You try think outside the box, whatever is in the market, what, what people, people are selling ice cream out here, the ice cream yes. in and stuff. Mm -hmm. But what will distinguish you from the rest? Mm -hmm. So we, we take a lot of time. We go to candy shops, we go to um, supermarkets, anything that you can mix with ice cream, because you find most of our um, flavors, are, we only dwell with five flavors. Mm -hmm. But out of the five flavors, we make something out of it, mm -hmm. out of different toppings. Yeah, yeah. Ah, so for the flavors that you have, do you locally source them or do you have to import them? The Kenyan market is yeah, it yeah, really yeah. Food? It's locally found. We do it Dairyland, Cream Bell, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so they actually, you actually source from them. So when it comes to your employees, I've seen you have a couple of staff members that are behind you. Did you have to teach them on how to create what you have in mind? Everything. From scratch? When we look for employees, we don't look for trained. Mm -hmm. We look for people who are working because mm -hmm. right now, the, the society is filled with youth people who don't have jobs. Mm -hmm. They finish school, but they have nothing to do, but they have the zeal to work. Yes. So you'll find all our employees from the first. We started with one, mm -hmm. then we got to three, mm -hmm. then we got to six. Currently, we are at 11. Mm -hmm. And all of them came knowing nothing. And none has experience for catering or anything. We just look for, you finish school, you're not a criminal. <laughs> yes. uh, and you're hardworking, and then we train. Mm -hmm. It takes very much time to train them, like, vijana ni vichwangumu sana, but you have to keep on keeping on. Yeah. But I realize the more you train them, the better they become, so yes. they prove that they can actually do it. Yeah. And anyone is capable of doing anything. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So for Yolo ice cream, do you have a specific clientele or you're open to any kind of person who wants to come and enjoy ice cream? Well, they say ice cream doesn't have age. <laughs> ice cream doesn't have uh, It doesn't have, like, actually it's for the young or yeah. for the old. Because currently, initially, we had an age bracket for 18 to Kizidi Sana 30. Mm -hmm. Currently, we're seeing families. We even see Wazes coming at 50s and 60s, yeah. so it doesn't really have an age bracket. But most of our clientele are minus 35. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of them. And we target a lot of them online. Our business is quietly online. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens if a client is interested? Because your social media pages are very, very active. What happens if a client wants uh, your products, but they're not within an area where they can get to you? That's a challenge we're facing currently. We only do deliveries in CBD because our products, smell, they get to melt very fast. So you find a client will order for an ice cream and is in Rwaka. By the time you deliver that ice cream all the way, it's a fika when you require. So they'll start complaining that, oh, this is not what I asked for or what I ordered from versus what I received. And that will really tarnish us online. So we decided until we get a solution for it, which would be we have to get maybe a rider with a, a cooler. Not no. even a cooler, because a cooler ca can't keep ice cold, mm. like ice ice. Mm. 
probably a refrigerator or something. Oh, okay. That is ah, the only okay. thing that can keep ice to ice. But mm -hmm. a coolant will only remain, maintain it to a normal temperature, mm -hmm. which we haven't found locally. Mm -hmm. So we're only doing deliveries on in CBD only ah, at okay. 100 bob, yeah. So that you say that CBD is mainly your area of operation? It is. We, we tried doing it in Kilimani, but it didn't work out so well. Reason being the the place we moved to had issues, so they demolished, so we came back. But we're e intending to expand Mombasa, Kisumu, and stuff like that. Ah, so when you were starting out, did you decide that you know what CBD is the best location? Or well, what are the... we we didn't decide that. We just had to go with the flow because where, where we were and what we bought, and where we were, uh, there was con there was already ready market for it. Like guys knew that place for ice cream. And I would say it has worked well for us because it's central. Because yeah. we get a lot of clients from Eastlands, Westlands. So it's central, so they get to come. I, I would say it's, it's actually a good idea that we settled here in CBD. Yeah. For the years that you've been in business, has Yolo been able to target uh, like clients who are business class, if I may say, like people who are office people? Corporate. Yes, corporate. Uh, I get to see them. Uh, I, I I get to see them maybe on 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 Saturdays. No, when they're late. Though, though. Yeah, or maybe late in the evening. Mm -hmm. But mostly we target school colleges. I get to see a lot of colleges, mm -hmm. students and stuff because I think they have enough time to walk in and out of class or. Uh, for corporate people, not not much. Not as much. I think because of the time. Maybe on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. When it comes to ice cream, it's something cold. Yeah. So is this can we say that this business is seasonal? That when it's cold, it's very seasonal. How do you deal with that? Uh, when it's sunny, we make money for the cold days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because when it's cold, we don't make like the sales go down like up to ninety percent. Wow, that's a big margin, and you can't and you can't chase away your your, your stuff and tell them when oh, no, it's cold, you guys go home. Yeah and the machines have to run and stuff like that. So it's very seasonal. So when, when it's sunny, we try... And make the most that you can. Yeah. Wow, going down by 90, that is quite a lot. It is a lot, yes. Wow. Wakenyaniwale <laughs> watu, when it's cold, they don't show up. It's coffee time. When it's cold, it's coffee time. When it's hot, it's ice cream. When it's hot, there. Wow. Like when it starts raining, you'll just see guys don't come to that all. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, a business taking a hit for up to past 50 percent maybe something that can push you to close your business but yellow ice cream is still surviving till then we're going to talk a short break but when you come back we're going to talk about some of the other challenges that they have been facing but they have been able to keep their business running you are watching tv 47 the home of untold stories J Hi and welcome back to The Grind. For those of you the first part, my name is Violet Njaki and today I'm in the amazing yellow ice cream. I, I'm hoping I'm going to buy one of the ice creams and get that fruity taste that yellow ice cream is known for. And I'm joined by one of the proprietors and she's been telling me how they got to rise to where they are right now. And you've told me that you faced a couple of challenges when you were starting up. What are some of the others that you've gone through or even you're facing right now that Sometimes you think, you know what business is in Azima, by the way, it's in Azima. <laughs> oh man, what can I say? Licenses, uh, Kanjo and stuff. In Kenya, doing this Biashara is proving to be very diffi difficult. The licenses for you to actually open up a place and just be known where you are, from yeah. the branding outside, everything yeah. is money. And 
So those are challenges that we get to face. Another one is working with the youth. Yeah. So it's a, like this generation is different. I would say it's different <laughs> from us or, or the previous one. So it's very hard for them to, whatever you have in mind for them to actually picture it and do it, it becomes very difficult, but you just have to persist. Um, what other challenges do we face? If I may ask about the licenses, you said it's a lot and sometimes even for most businesses they say it's a bit expensive for them. Do you think the government is trying to limit Kenyan youths by, for, when it comes to starting their businesses because of how much they charge us to get a single license? I, I, I don't know what exactly is their goal, but I think it would really help if they just have a reasonable amount so that because a lot of youth are trying to do something with their lives because all of us can't fit in the corporate industry yes. so we have ideas you want to do something but then again when you think of doing it from even the rents in town yeah. actually let's just start with the rent it's, <laughs> it's too much right for you get a for you to get um a good location like on yes. ground floor it's yes. impossible there's something like goodwill yeah as case we've always like our previous work uh, our previous location was on third floor mm -hmm. guys used to say oh how comes you're in third floor mm -hmm. major feature sana yeah. but, but you see the higher you go at least the more affordable it becomes yeah. eh? and now we're on first floor mm -hmm. but still they complain with major feature so there are those things that you have to consider you can't also just go ground floor because you'll ask for rent for like half a million. How will you be able to cater for that and be just selling ice cream or you'll be a shutter is seasonal and stuff like that. So those are the challenges that you have to face. So you have to balance in, in the sense that if you're intending to do that business for a long time, maybe five years, if in case anything happens, you can always sustain it. You don't have to shut in the next six months because Beshara is not as easy. You just need to be um, very patient, very consistent. Because one, it, you, you'll always get a breakthrough. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to take you back a little bit to the making of the ice cream. Do you have like a fast flowing flavor that goes always and always uh, more than the others? And how are you able to, when a client comes in, what is the process that they have to go to to get their order and all that? Yeah, there's a, there's a flavor that sells most is vanilla. We, we, we vanilla. Oh yes, it's, 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 it's a safe, we call it a safe <laughs> flavor. Uh -huh. In a group of 100, 90 will choose vanilla. So that's a flavor that we must have. Mm -hmm. uh, so for YOLO, we do self-service. Mm -hmm. We don't serve you, we don't wait. Out. In the sense that when you walk in, you come to the cashier, mm -hmm. you're given a menu, you go through your menu, you, and then you pick your order, you place your order, and then you sit down, and then we serve you. Mm -hmm. That's the process. So we don't do waiting or, this is because we serve a lot of young people and they're cheeky. So you'll find, you by the time you're turning like this, they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> so you prefer they pay fast and then serve okay. them. Oh, you may turn and one is outside the door. <laughs> oh. So what about the, you see how you have the different, when we bring a cup, I've seen some that have like chocolate, they have nuts, they have like, I don't, I don't there's even know how nuts, to there's chocolate, there's candy, uh, there's fruits. Mm -hmm. So we we do fruits. There are people who don't like nuts, so we don't put nuts on every. Mm -hmm. and then we have a section for extra topping. Mm -hmm. Assuming you've gotten uh, the best, like our best seller is familiar stranger, four, four scoops of ice cream with just a garnish of waffles. Mm -hmm. But there's someone who wants more, so they yeah. pay more. You can either pay for more uh, fruits, more nuts. Mm -hmm. So there are chocolates. Um, waffles, we make fresh waffles. Wow, fresh, okay. Yes, we uh, bake them here, we make everything fresh. Uh, and so when it comes, when it's like that, uh, do you price depending on what someone is asking for or how are you going to price all that? We price uh, depending on the content, or the, whatever the ice cream carries. There are mm -hmm. toppings that are very expensive. There are chocolate bars that are not locally found. Mm -hmm. Uh, we price according to how the, the, the ice cream, what it entails. If it has candy, what is the price of candy, if they're locally found, and stuff like that. So they will, they will vary from price to price depending on what it entails. Yeah, yeah. Wow, okay, that, that is quite unique because it's not everywhere that you go, you're given, now pick your toppings. Yeah, no, <laughs> it can't be the same. Yeah. Yeah, the price of, 
uh, candy is not the price of nuts, it's not the price of chocolate bars, mm -hmm. chocolate caramel and stuff like that. Yeah, so it has to be different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Let's talk about a competition. Uh, more ice cream bars are coming up and ice cream parlors. How are you able to do this competition that people will always go to Yolo ice cream? We just need to stay on point. I, I say we have to, what we do is every other year we try bring something new on the table because as you said, people are not sleeping out here. Yeah. So what we do is try introduce new stuff, new stuff, different flavors, uh, different experiences for our clients so that we can stay in the game. So that's, that, that we have to do constantly and also revamping our place because most of the people, our clients, and uh, they appreciate good ambience. Mm -hmm. So even when you have a place like us, mm -hmm. every year we get to renovate or we get to make it newer to their eyes yeah. so that they can always choose to come. So it becomes very expensive to stay in the market, but it becomes worth it in the long run. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. As much as it is expensive to stay in the market, you have to like put yourself out there so that people can know there's YOLO ice cream. How is your marketing strategy? Uh, our biggest budget on market, actually our biggest budget is on marketing. We are 90% online, Instagram, Facebook, mostly Instagram. Mm, uh, the others are clients who have been referred or repeat clients. But every day we get like plus 10 or 20 new clients from online. So we constantly do a lot of online marketing every day, yeah. With online marketing, you may get clients who are, uh, even, even if it's not clients, people who are, what can I say that? They're not actually, they are not happy about the rise of yellow ice cream. And they may give negative feedback. How do you deal with that? Yeah, you smile. <laughs> you smile and be like, oh, we'll do better. Mm -hmm. But you take in whatever that we can accommodate, because as you said, we can't make everyone happy. Yes. Anything that we can do to improve our services, anything that we can do to improve our products, we will definitely do it. And for those ones that know, just um, post or just to get to you, you just uh, re reply positively and move on because there's nothing you can do about it. Because yeah. online is very sensitive. One comment can keep you out of business for a very long yes. time. Yes. So we take that with absolute concern and, and we rectify what we can and be better. And whatever response we give them, yes. make sure it's polite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Has running Yolo Ice Cream, or rather being an entrepreneur running this business, has it been able to open models for you outside of Yolo Ice Cream? Hmm. Uh, it has opened our minds, actually, mm -hmm. Sana. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what I would say about YOLO, what it has done so far, it has empowered a lot of people, including our staff and ourselves. So currently we are looking also to go from county to county because there is constant demand online. We get clients saying, you guys need to bring it in Mombasa, you guys need to bring it in Kisumu. Yeah. Those two places on National Aculis are sana, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, especially Mombasa. Because yeah, because of the heat, uh, yeah. And even Nakuru, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a growing city right now. Mm -hmm. It's something we're working on, and we hope probably by end of year or end next year we'll have something, something like a branch or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Is that the future of your local county to county? Yes, yes, that's the future. Actually, our mission is to be able to go to different areas in the country and and, and serve a lot of ice cream <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and also change lives of the young boys they, 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 if we can be able to grow together mm. you know there's, there's the point of growing as a business but also empowering these people because they actually behind they do it all mm. I just teach them we teach them but they're the ones doing they it all ones so, doing so, it. Yeah. so if you can also empower them why not yeah mm. What has running this business, being an entrepreneur and running this entity, what has it taught you as a person? Uh, that discipline, business needs discipline, mm. that you need to spend money to make money. Yeah, so the, you, you can't be stingy and, and expect to, to grow. Yeah. You can't be stingy and expect to be known. Mm. And another teaching is that I, I actually didn't know that 
when you go everywhere, you see billboards for Coca-Cola and yes. Safari Cop. Yes. Every corner you go. Yeah. And you always ask yourself, okay, fine, why are these guys still marketing and they've made it? <laughs> yeah. These guys have made it. They're, yeah. they're like, but there's need for marketing in business. Mm -hmm. Constant need. You need to continuously be visible to your clients mm -hmm. for you to be able to get to where you're going. Yes. Don't ever get comfortable. Where there's comfort, you never grow. So we've learned that uh, hard work pays, and, and, and it pays. It pays. <laughs> and what advice will you have for someone who wants to start such a business but they fear of the fact that you may not hit as much as they've done? Not, not to give up. Just, just keep at it. If, if it's not working, try something else. Yeah, just keep at it. The most important thing is if you have the interest, you don't need, I get people asking us, uh, do you guys train, do you, well, we don't do that. But do you know if you really badly want it, you can get it. Mm. You don't need a trainer, you just, you, I, this is, we're living in the times where technology, phone, phone all the time. Yeah. If you're to go through different apps, YouTube in interest, yeah. you can learn so much. So what I would advise you is just, Put God first, yeah, and whatever you're looking at, just do it. Mm -hmm. Do it to some ilishindwa, and then try again, try again. It will always come through. Eventually, you'll have something to show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is not false. Mm -mm. <laughs> that is the only way I can explain where we are right now. It is by continuously persisting on doing something, and it falls and it fails, and we've lost so much, mm -hmm. but never give up. As long as you believe in it and the person you're working with also believes in it, it's, it's very much possible. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So even as we wind up, uh, question, uh, did you ever wake up one day, business has gone so bad and you're like, you know what, see last one. Yes. How did you deal with that? Many times, especially the corona time. <laughs> yeah. We had to close for two months and we were like, man, what's the worst that can happen? We yeah. can just go back home. Like, by you look at where you're from, you're like, no, I can't give up now. So we, you just, you just keep at it. That's all I can say. Like you have to always reflect on where, how far you've come from. Is it really worth it to give up right now? And probably that challenge you're facing is meant to make you stronger. For an entrepreneur, they, they, you, you don't give up that fast. If you look at the reach of people who have prospered, they all have stories. And if you're to be shaken by something small and just decide to give up, then I think you're in the wrong industry. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> office. No. Office desk. Uh, you just wait for your salary. Yeah. But as long as you're in business, you wake up one day and you'll be told, okay, the owner of the shop wants his shop back. Yeah. So what will you do? Yeah. You can't go. You have to be strategized yeah. quick. So you have to be strong. Uh, yeah. So if someone wants to get to taste the ice creams that Yolo offers, where do they get you and how they can they get in contact with you and where you're located? Uh, yeah, Karibuni Sana. We, we are at, this building is called Algate Building. People don't know it so much. So we refer it as former Uchumi, Aga Kanwak. Currently the one with Naivas, we're on first floor. The entrance is directly opposite Electricity House uh, parking. KPLC parking. Yeah, we, we open at 9, we close at 8. But past 8, you can still get servings, but 8. Um, we are also online on Facebook, YOLO Ice Cream, on Instagram, YOLO underscore ISEC. Karibu Sana, we host kids, families, birthdays. Yeah, yeah, and ice cream solves everything, so it's also free therapy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your insights on running this. Karibu sana, thank you for choosing YOLO. Yeah, and I hope that it continues to grow. Yeah, amen, amen. Well, <laughs> that is all you had for you today here at YOLO. Very amazing, very beautiful place. And we've learned that failure is not fault. You have to keep going. You'll fall, but you'll have to rise. And that is the journey of entrepreneurship. Well, talk to us on 22047 and tell us who do you want us to feature next. Or talk to us on TV47KE on all our social media platforms. Violet and Jackie, all my social media platforms. Until next week, 